We're getting ready for permission, Bible study. It's going to be out about a minute or so before 6 o'clock. Uh, if everybody a chance to jump on here with us uh, for Bible study. Uh, we'll start with a, uh, just a couple of announcements uh, for the week. And... Um, to have everybody ready for Easter Sunday. Uh, and then we have a few prayer requests and pray for courts. And, uh, and then we'll get into our Bible study for the night. Uh, we're set up here in the. Put your thing up a little bit. I don't know yet. It's behind about a minute, so keep going. Um, well, we got six o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and, and get started. Um, just some quick announcements. If uh, you haven't been catching the daily short devotionals for Holy Week, um, you uh, you can catch those here on the page. Um, we have been doing one each each day. Uh, Mondays was late because time got away from me. Um, and Tuesdays was not quite as late, and then today's was at noon. Um, if you click on the, the top of the, the um, uh, video there, you can go to the Facebook page and scroll down and find the, the devotional for each day of the week. Um, also, uh, if you're not friends with Malachi on his page, uh, he's been doing a, a, a devotional on practical Christianity each day of the week. He started Sunday. Um, I highly recommend you, um, again, if you're not his friend on Facebook, to uh, send him a Facebook request um, and uh, go to his page and, and watch those devotionals he's been doing each, each night. He's been doing them at 6 o'clock. Uh, but due to us having prayer meeting tonight and Bible study, he's going to wait till after tonight's uh, Bible study here to do that uh, for tonight. Uh, but they're doing an excellent job. Uh, I believe it was Sunday night. He he uh, posted a challenge um, uh, for everybody to write out their testimony and then do a Facebook Live. Um, yeah. I, I did mine. Um, I, I think it's a great, great challenge. I think everybody should do it. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I haven't seen it. I haven't really been on Facebook a lot. Um, but, uh, you know, I haven't really seen anybody else tag them in it yet either. So uh, the challenge is out there, people. Uh, come on, y'all need, need to step up and play too. I think it's a great idea. Um, if you're a Christian, you got a testimony. Don't think yours isn't a good one because everybody has got a testimony and everybody can, can give it. Uh, you don't know how your testimony might impact somebody. Um, Sunday morning is uh, is Easter morning. Uh, I know it's, it's jumped up on us. Uh, uh, you know, we will be having a sunrise service. Uh, it won't be like... Years gone by, uh, where we'll meet at the church and do a sunrise service due to all the, you know, the guidelines and everything. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of churches are doing these drive-in services and stuff, and I'd love to do something like that. I just, I don't know how to do those. I don't, uh, I, I've heard that they're doing them with tuning into the radios and this, that, and the other, and um, we're not set up for that kind of stuff. We're out here in the middle of the country and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, but we'll live stream it right here at 7 a.m. Uh, Easter morning. Um, so, you know, join us here. Maybe you can, you know, maybe you got a, a spot in your yard where, you know, you can view the sunrise and you can go out and watch it on your phone or your tablet or, you know, take your laptop out with you and, you know, make sure that the battery's charged well, real well and all. Um, and then at 11 o'clock, we'll have our regular Easter service streamed right here again as well on this page. Um, some praise reports, uh, some praise and, and prayer for the week. 
Uh, Tom continues to get better. He continues to progress in the right direction. It's a very slow progress, uh, but he's making progress in the right direction. Uh, but please continue to pray for him. Um, God is helping him to get better each day. So your prayers are working. Uh, and and uh, so just keep praying for him. Um, it's, very, it's with a very heavy heart that I ask that you pray for Miss Patsy Lee. Um, yesterday afternoon as I was getting ready to cook dinner, I got a call from Miss Patsy's phone. Uh, and as I answered the call, it was Levy County EMT on the other line uh, to let me know that Mr. Roy had passed away. And he put her on the line, and as you can imagine, she was very upset and very could not talk. I let her know that I would be over as quickly as I could be. Um, we ended up a hurry as quickly as we could and rushed over. Um, you know, they were in the middle of doing what they have to do, you know, in those type of situations when somebody passes away at home um, and not under hospice care. Um, you know, they... They're, they're, you know, they've done everything they could. They, they worked on him for quite a long time. and uh, Unfortunately, they couldn't, couldn't bring him back. Um, Miss Patsy needs your prayers. Um, she needs a lot of prayers for comfort right now, and she's going to go through a, a really long hard time. Um, you know, she, she's been... Brother Roy's had a lot of health problems for some time, but, you know, it was very unexpected. Uh, but keep her in your prayers. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, with the situation we're in, the time we're in, the pandemic we're in, um, we aren't able to have normal services like we would normally. Uh, so at this time, all they're going to be able to have is a uh, graveside service for close, immediate family only. Um, you know, she may plan something later down the road after all this is over. I don't know yet. Uh, we will, you know, put that out when that comes about. Uh, but, um, but others, you know, but continue to keep her in your prayers. Her family, uh, her daughter's out in Oklahoma. Uh, you know, his family is out from out in Kentucky, Tennessee area there. Uh, so keep all them in your prayers. Uh, I know she's got sisters over in the uh, St. Cloud, uh, Lake, Air, Lake, Lake County area. Um, but uh, other prayer requests, uh, there, there's others that are dealing with, you know, different kind of problems such as allergies and loss of work, uh, cut hours at work. Others are going stir crazy from bring, being stuck at home. Uh, and then I've been asked to keep uh, somebody in prayer. I'm not going to mention any names, but it's a family member of one of the members of our church uh, that's been dealing with an alcohol addiction. And um, we've been asked to keep this person in our prayers. Um, uh, they've um, admitted themselves into a... Uh, rehab facility, um, whatever you call that type of place. But um, just keep this person in your prayer. God knows who it is, and uh, they just need prayer to break this addiction. And so be praying for them. If you have prayers, um, specific prayers that you would like prayer, prayer for, please comment it on this video. You can message this page. You can text or call me at 352 Four three six three one nine one, and so you know, and that doesn't have to be at this moment. You can call me later tomorrow, you know, any time during the week, and, and we'll definitely keep you in our prayers. I pray for each of our members, uh, regular attendees, 
Um, each day, you know, I, I have a list, and I, I tell people this all the time. I, I pray for all of our people. You know, every week I, I pray for each of our people specifically by name once a week. You know, and, and I believe that's very important. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just come to you tonight, Lord, just thanking you for this day. I thank you for this week, Lord, this holy week. This week, Lord, that we come to remember what you sent your Son to this earth to do for us. Fathers, this past Sunday we celebrated Palm Sunday. Father, the, the day that he came to Jerusalem and was celebrated as uh, a king, Lord, even though the people didn't understand it. Father, and Lord, as we go through the week and we think of the different things that happened throughout the week and Lord, as we lead up to, to Friday, and we call it Good Friday, Lord, because it was, even though as we, we think of it as kind of a dark day, but Lord, really it was a, a day that your son died on the cross for our sins. Lord, without the cross, there could be no resurrection, but without the resurrection, the cross would have meant nothing. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your Son. We thank you for his shed blood. I thank you, Father, that you gave us salvation. Lord, I thank you for your Son paying the price that I may be found righteous. Lord, that I may be able to stand here tonight and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, I come thanking you for the healing that you are performing in Brother Tom's life, Lord, as he progressively gets better. Lord, we, we thank you. Father, they are, they're small steps. Lord, they're, they're steps in the right direction. Lord, we thank you that they are in the right direction. And Lord, we just pray that you'll continue to help him to get better. Uh, Lord, just help him to continue to to fight and, and to get better. And, uh, Lord, just continue to work around him and be with him, Lord. Uh, Father, I just pray now lifting up to you, Miss Patsy. But I pray that you would wrap your arms of comfort around her. Lord, help her to feel your presence in her life right now, Lord. As she goes through this time. Father, help her to know that she has a church family. Uh, Lord, that loves her and, and cares about her, and that, Lord, that we will be there for her during this time. Lord, uh, Brother, Brother Roy's passing has left a void in our hearts, but, Lord, we're thankful that he knew you as his Lord and Savior. Father, I, I'm thankful that uh, for the many, many t conversations that I've been able to have with him and friendship and the relationship that I was able to have with him and the, the many times of talking to him, Lord, knowing that he's walking the streets of gold with you, Lord, and, and, and knowing that the promises that, that you give us in your scripture, Lord, knowing that when he took his last breath yesterday, Lord, that he was immediately in your presence, Father. I thank you for those promises, Lord, that Father, it does leave a void in our hearts, and it is hard, Lord, knowing that I'm not going to be able to go over and sit down and have those conversations again with him, Father. We're going to miss him terribly here on earth, but Lord, we thank you that we'll be able to see him again in paradise with you one day. And we'll be able to go up and worship you with him one day. Father, I just... I guess I'm a little jealous of him today. Lord, he's there with you, and I'm down here still. But Lord, I do. I'm heartbroken for Miss Patsy tonight. I'm hurting for him, her. Lord, your word tells us when when one of our, our people are are weeping to weep with them, when one of them are rejoicing, rejoice with them. And Lord, tonight I'm weeping with her because I know she is hurting. I know she is. Lost. I know she she don't know what tomorrow is going to look like. Lord, just 
we ask that you'd be with her. Father, we do ask that you'll be with those that are battling these allergies. Father, it's the pollen is just so unbearable right now. Father, we ask that you'll be with those that their jobs have been cut or their hours have been cut. Lord, we ask for those that are just experiencing different kinds of losses or different kinds of troubles during this pandemic. Lord, I pray for all those that are going through this virus, Lord. Father, we pray that you may just remove this virus. If be thy will, Lord, that you bind it up and remove it, Father. We know, Lord, and we have the faith and we trust, Lord, knowing that, Father, your word says that you can, you can take this virus and you can pluck it up and remove it and throw it into the sea. Lord, we have faith knowing you can do that immediately, if it be thy will, but Lord, we know that there's a reason for it. We know, Lord, that there's something that we can learn through this time of being in this pandemic and being told to stay home. Lord, there, there's things that we can learn during this time. And, and Father, I just pray that you'd help us to not focus on the worldly things of this pandemic. Lord, the spiritual things. But Lord, we we wouldn't keep focusing on all the problems of the world, but Lord, that we would start focusing on you and what you would have us to learn from all of this. But I pray that you would be with our government officials. Lord, I do pray for our president and our vice president. Lord, as they've built up this, this task force that to help them to make the decisions that need to be made. Lord, I pray that you'd give them guidance and direction and wisdom, Lord, Father, to make the right decisions. I pray that you would just be with all of our government officials, all the way from the federal government, all the way down to our local officials, uh, right here in our, our own towns, Father. We'll be with our armed forces, Lord, here and all the way around the world. We'll be with our uh, national and state and local associations, Father, our Southern Baptist and state conventions, Lord. Be with our church, Father. It's Sunday is Easter, one of our main holidays or one of our main gatherings of the year, Lord. And, and, and Father, it's going to be very unusual. It's going to be very weird not to meet together in the sanctuary, in the building, Father. Father, I just ponder, I just stop to think and wonder. What it is that we need to learn from this time of quarantine from this time of staying at home more. Father, as we study your word tonight, as we see how you taught through the prophet Ezekiel and, and reminded the Israelites of their past sins and showed them of their past sins. Lord, I, I, I just I have I, I stop to wonder how we were founded in the United States of a godly country, a, a country that came here to this land, be founded on religious principles and religious freedom to only be a strayed, following after idols and false gods, chasing after the almighty dollar, the money and the the hobbies and the, the entertainment and the sports and all these things that Lord taken away. And now we're at home. And Father, now we need to focus on you. I pray, Father, that we would Turn from our wicked ways and humbly come before you, seeking your face. And 
repent of our sins and truly see what it is you'd have us as Christians to do in this time. Father, I ask that you would reveal that to me, that you would reveal what it is I need to do in my life, Lord, that you convict me of the things in my life that I need to do. Father, I pray that you would just forgive me of my sins now, Lord, that you may speak through me and that you may use me to teach this lesson tonight. Lord, that the people wouldn't hear my voice, but Father, that they would hear from you tonight the message and the lesson that it is that you'd have them to hear. Lord, I ask all these things in Jesus' wonderful, precious name. Amen. Last week we looked in uh, at chapter 19 of Ezekiel. There God offers uh, a lamentation for the princes of Israel. There was two princesses, princess, he addressed them through these lamentations or or these are poems which were like funeral poems. And then at the end of the chapter, he addresses the people of Israel for their failure to follow God. This again was a, a, a lamentation or a, a funeral poem. And tonight we're going to be, be in chapter 20. We won't make it all the way through chapter 20. It's, it's 49 verses. And it begins a new section of the book of Ezekiel. Uh, and this section of the prophecy is the final collection of messages of judgment concerning the fall of Judah in Jerusalem. Uh, this section goes from chapter 20 through chapter 24, uh, and it addresses the matter of Yahweh's concern for his name and reputation. Uh, so this is, again, 49 verses long, and it can be broken down into eight divisions. Uh, verses 1 through 4, uh, the prophet speaks to the elders speaking directly to the elders that uh, they actually come to him seeking something. Verses 5 through 9, there's lessons from the Exodus. Verses 10 through 14 are lessons from the wilderness days. Verses 15 through 22 are lessons uh, for the 40 years of wandering. And then lessons 23 through 29 are past rebellions committed in the land. Verses 30 through 39 represent or present rebellions and the coming exile, and then 40 through 44, the purification after the exile, and then verses 45 through 49, the call, and my iPad, just the call for judgment to begin. So the first thing we see here in chapter 20 is verses 1 through 4 is a speech to the elders. It is the prophet is speaking to the elders. So, so verses 1 through 4 of chapter 20 says this, And it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me. Then came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, for ye come to inquire of me, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Wilt thou judge them, son of man? Wilt thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. This is the fourth dated prophecy in the book of Ezekiel. So this is the fourth time that we are given a, in a date in the book of Ezekiel. And this is the seventh year in the fifth month of the tenth day of the month. This would be all, uh, in, the, in the month of August, 591 B.C. Um, 591 years before Christ. A contingent of elders, a, a, a congregation of elders, a, a, a group of el elders gained an audience with the prophets. So this group of elders come to meet with Ezekiel and the scene is similar to the elders approaching Ezekiel in chapter 14. They approach Ezekiel to inquire of the Lord, that is to seek an oracle or a word from God. They, they wanted him to, to ask uh, God or to seek God, to pray to God, um, to inquire of God uh, 
about, you know, a good word or some good news for them. Their inquiry wasn't, uh, isn't recorded. They, it, we're not told what they were asking for. We're not told what they were actually wanting to know. Uh, but judging from the response to it, they had not come in humble repentance. So in other words, we're not, we're, they didn't come with a fully devoted heart to God. They, they weren't coming in repentance. They didn't come and repent to God in a devoted heart and then say, okay, God, you know, we're sorry for our ways. We're sorry for what we've done. We're sorry for all this. Can you tell us this? They just come and, you know, they're not willing to give up any of their past sins or anything like that. They just want to know this information. They wanted good news from God without having a willingness to follow God. I like that sometimes. We, we want, God, I want you to heal, you know, I want you to heal my son or I want you to heal me of my sickness. You know what? I'm not willing to give this up. Lord, will you heal me of my lung cancer? But I'm not willing to give up smoking. Lord, I want you to heal me on my, my liver cancer, but I ain't willing to give up drinking. Lord, I want you to give up, heal me of my diabetes, but Lord, I ain't giving up them sweets. I'm going to continue to eat that cake. Every night, I'm going to continue to eat that, that, that ice cream every night, God, but, you know, would you just please heal me of my diabetes? You know, it, it's... We, we got to we got to be willing to follow God. We got to be willing to repent and, and respond to God. And God answered, "As I live it, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you." It's meaning He would not give Ezekiel the information for him. He's not going to tell Ezekiel what they wanted to know. He's not going to give Ezekiel information that they wanted. Instead, God promised to give him the words they needed to hear. And instead of giving Ezekiel what they wanted to hear, he's going to give Ezekiel, really, the opposite of what they wanted to hear, what they needed to hear. Double statement, will thou judge them, son of man? Will thou judge them? God was telling Ezekiel to be their advocate. Confront the elders with their iniquities. To explain to them their detestable practices. In essence, as an introduction to what followed, God instructed Ezekiel to tell these elders to listen to the record of the past sins of Israel, which the prophet was going to rehearse for them. He says, listen to what has happened over the past you know, decades. Listen to what has happened since I, I formed the nation of Israel. And, and then, maybe talk. You know, you, you, you all think that y'all are such a great people. Listen to what I've dealt with from y'all. You know, y'all continue to do all this, but this is what I've dealt with. God's judgment is never unpredictable. He always brings judgment in response to disobedience and unfaithfulness. Thus, it always deserves judgment. You know, as, as kids, we always would say, hey, man, that's not fair. You know, that's not fair. And, and we'd always, you know, mom would always say, well, life's not fair. God's judgment is never unpredictable. In other words, we get judged because of something we did. It, he didn't just judge us. He didn't just discipline us because we didn't deserve it. He disciplined us because we deserved it. Gave us discipline because of something we did, not because of something we didn't do. Lessons from the from the Exodus, from when God brings the Israelites out of Egypt, verses five through nine says this: and "Say unto them, Thus says saith the Lord God, in the day when I chose Israel and lifted up my hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob." made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt when I lifted up my hand unto them saying I am the Lord your God and the day that I lifted up my hand unto them to bring them forth 
of the land of Egypt into a land that I despised for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man that the abomination of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes? Neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt? I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them, and bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. God appeared to the Hebrews in the time of Moses when while in the captivity in Egypt and remixed them a land of milk and honey. He found them, he, he got them this land of milk and honey. He brought them out of the bondage and chosen Israel to be his special people. I chose Israel, a covenant language, and is a reminder of the relationship between God and Israel at the time he led them from bondage in Egypt and chose them to be his people by the covenant made at Sinai. In verse 5, In the day when I chose Israel and lifted up my hand onto the seed of the house of Jacob, this suggests that the God took a solemn oath to fulfill the promise of the covenant. God made a covenant. He made a promise to the Israelites, a promise that would not be broken. Based on their covenant relationship with God, God commanded them to stop all vile foreign religious practices. God, God called on them. He commanded them to stop worshiping these false gods. He had delivered them to bring them into the land flowing with milk and honey, and they should be faithful to him. He calls on them to stop this. Stop worshiping false idols, and then he blesses them beyond measure. Instead of obeying them, the people rebelled and refused to listen to God's request. Ezekiel probably had in mind the rebellion of the people while still in Egypt, or in the early days of the wilderness wandering. This was either an unrecorded event or possibly reference to the golden calf incident in Ezekiel. In Exodus 32, this sin occurred shortly after their departure from Egypt and was an example of how quickly they abandoned faithfulness to Yahweh and appealed to Egypt gods for deliverance. They, they left Egypt. They, 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 God draws and brings them out of Egypt. He secures them. I mean, and, and Pharaoh starts to chase after them. God does a huge miracle in their life by parting the Red Sea. And then as Pharaoh is, and his armies are coming after them to, to overtake them, God does another miracle by, by wiping out Pharaoh and his armies by covering them up with the Red Sea. And yet, they get to Sinai and they make this golden calf and worship it. But, but whatever incident Ezekiel had in mind, he stated that God spared the people because of his name, Yahweh, which embodied his character. Though people are sinful and rebellious, God seeks to redeem them and faithfully fulfills his promise of life and blessings for them. Such an example is a story of, ex of the exodus from Egypt and the subsequent rebellion in the wilderness. I can't help but to think of our own country when reading this. Here God is, is speaking of the Israelites, about their behavior, uh, about how they have turned away from him. And after all he has done for them, after he brought them out of bondage into a land of milk and honey, richly blessed them, and they turned their backs on him, following false gods. Our forefathers, they left England and Europe and where worship was controlled by the state government to be, and they, they left there to come here, 
to, to be able to worship freely, to come to a new land, to worship God Almighty however they wanted. And God blessed them greatly. We might even say to a country flowing with milk and honey, the USA has become the greatest country in the world, the strongest in the world, but if we are honest, the whole we have turned from God. We have become wicked as a whole. We are worshiping false gods. In the USA, there are so many other things that we worship besides God Almighty, from money, to sports, to movie stars, to music, to hunting and fishing, to name it. We worship it. And we give God so very little. And I'm just as guilty as the next person. And with us not being able to meet in the building together for service, it's gotten me thinking the last few days about worshiping God. We come together, we sing, we go through the motions. Are we truly worshiping God as He would have us worship Him with hearts wide open? As our lives in this world ha has been so fast-paced, we rush from one thing to another. We rush to get to church on Sunday mornings. We rush to get home, to eat lunch, then to, to do the next thing, to, to get outside, to do this, to do that, to, to you know go fishing on Sunday afternoon or to the hunting camp on Sunday afternoon or to the, the horse arena or to, to this thing or to that thing or to, to watch a movie or to take a nap or whatever we need to do. We're constantly rushing. Now all of a sudden God has slowed our lives down. At least some. Even if you're still working, it slowed us down some because he's taking a lot of things away. While we sit at home, we need to think about how we all need to draw closer to God. He's taking sports away. He's taking a lot of entertainment away. You can't have concerts now. You can't have sporting events now. You can't have all these different things now. You know, we can still sit in front of the TV and watch it hours upon hours. Maybe we need to turn that stupid TV off and read our Bibles more. Spend more time in God's Word. and Spend more time praying. And more time focusing on God. and Really focusing on what worship is. I just feel like God is trying to show us. Maybe it's just God's trying to show me something. You know, he's pulled us out of the, the church building, the sanctuary. He's pulled us out of there. You know, and some churches, they're, they're doing driving, not meeting inside the building anymore. They're, they're driving in, but at red level, we're, we're doing it through live stream. You know, when we, when we show up, you know, are we just going through the motions? Are we really there to worship God? Are we there to check something off of a checklist? Or are we really there for God? Are we there for the fellowship time? Are we there to, to see, you know, this person and that person that one's neck and take that one's hand or are we really there to serve God? In verses 10 through 14 we see a lesson from the wilderness days. He says there in verse 10, Wherefore I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statues and showed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths. Be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. But that but the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes. They 
despised my judgment, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. In my Sabbath, they greatly polluted them. Then I said, I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted for the heathen, in whose sight I wrought them out. Continue to follow the, the storyline of the Exodus from Egypt. Ezekiel turns to the wilderness experience as a second example of Israel's rebellion. God freed them from Egypt and gave them laws, decrees, and rules for living. Two words were employed for the same distinction of the two of the two is necessary. In addition to providing his laws, God also provided the Sabbath. The mention of the Sabbath goes beyond reference to a day of rest observed weekly. It also was considered a perpetual sign of God's presence with the Hebrews and his pledge to keep his covenant with them. He's saying it's more than just a day of rest. It's a sign between me and you. It's a sign of our covenant to observe the observation of the Sabbath was a constantly reoccurring acknowledgement of God as the creator of the earth, of the universe. So observing the, the Sabbath day was, was acknowledging that God is the creator of the universe. It would be an open denial of God for an Israelite to desecrate the Sabbath. But the people rebelled against the decrees and the laws and desecrated the Sabbath anyway. This is another example of people who profess to believe and serve Yahweh, whose daily practice proceeded as if God did not exist. He's telling them, you, you profess to believe in God, but yet your daily practice does not show that you do. You, you, you walk around saying that you believe in me, but your practice, your daily practice, your, your daily ways, the, the way you act daily, does not show that you believe in me. God gave them laws and degrees, the Sabbath, so that they would know him. The Hebrew word there for know speaks specifically of knowledge by personal experience. In other words, God wanted the Israelites to know him personally, to have that personal relationship with him. God wants to personally know us. He, he wants us to walk in a personal relationship with Him. He don't want us just to show up on Sunday mornings and, and sing, uh, you know, how great thou art and because He lives and, and uh, Jesus is my friend and this, that, and the other. And then hear, you know, the country boy from Red Level to give a message and then go home and, you know, and then come back next week and do the same thing over again. He wants to have a personal relationship with Every day that we are spending with Him, you know, we have to think about our relationship with God much more than our relationship with our spouse. If I show up to my marriage like I showed up to, to, uh, to God at church on a Sunday morning, if that's all I showed up to was an hour, maybe two hours uh, a week to marriage, my marriage wouldn't last. Some of us wouldn't be married anymore if our, our relationship was reflected in our marriage, if our Christianity was reflected in our marriage. In other words, God wanted the Israelites to know Him personally, to have a personal relationship with Him. But despite the Israelites not knowing God personally, Moses appealed to God not to abandon or annihilate them. The basis of his appeal was the name represented the character and reputation of God. Again, His namesake, God spared Israel for His namesake. It was because of God's namesake. Verses 15-22, through 22, we see wandering years. Lessons from the wandering years. Verse 15 says, Yet also I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness, that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them, Flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands, because they despised my judgments and walked not in my statutes. 
but polluted my Sabbaths. Their heart went after their idols. Nevertheless, my eye spared them from destroying, destroying them. Neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. But I said unto the children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statue of your fathers, neither observe their judgments, nor defile your, yourselves with their idols. Verse 19, I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statues and keep my judgments and do them. And hallow my Sabbath. And they shall be a sign between me and you that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Notwithstanding the children rebel against me. They walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgment. Do them. But if a man do, he shall even live in them. They polluted my Sabbaths. Then I said, I would pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand and wrought for my name's sake that I should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen and whose sight I brought them forth. In spite of their history of rebellion, God gave them the land of promise. But once again, they rebelled and would not enter. He leads them to the, the land filled with milk and honey, and we know the story. They send spies in there, and they come back, and oh man, there's, there's giants in there. We can't defeat them. They didn't have the faith. So he left them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years until all the generation had died. Only those 20 years and under that were allowed to enter the land. Those that, that were, were under the age of 20, when they went in and decided they didn't have the faith to enter, to, to defeat them, to enter. So God took care of their needs and exhorted them to, to not follow idols. The people again rebelled against the law and desecrated the Sabbath. Even though God had took care of them, and even though God had, 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 had told them and, and, and exhorted them, he, 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 you know, he just begged them and, and pleaded with them, don't follow idols, don't go after pagan gods. They still desecrated the Sabbath and went against the laws. This reference to the rebellion even after the judgment of the wilderness wandering was reminiscent of the Israelites choice to follow Baal worship prior to their entry into the land of promise. God withheld judgment again as he drew back his hand and spared the nation. God, he, he, he held back his hand and spared the nation even after they once again rebelled against him. Time and time again, Israelites were going against God. I, I, as I read that, those verses, I, I once again I think of our country. He, he, he's brought us into this land of flowing with milk and honey. We have despised his, his laws and his judgments and polluted his Sabbath. See, he says in verse 16, but polluted my Sabbath for their heart went after their idols. And I'm not here to judge anybody. And I'm not here to point fingers at anybody. But I have a hard time not thinking about some of these services that make their services like a rock concert. And I'm not saying that they're wrong. That's between them and God. But, and hey, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking God right now to know hey, what is in our service that could be wrong that we need to change up, that we need to do differently, that we need to do better at, so that we're not polluting the Sabbath, so that our hearts are not going after our idols. You know, is there something that we're doing in our Sunday morning service? You know, when, when we're back in our building, it could be going after our idols. You know, do we have something that, that could be, you know, 
that, that could be that verse right there that we need to change? You know, that, that, that's my, you know, that's something that I'm seeking God right now. Because I really feel like God has brought us out of the buildings right now that we need to, we need to cleanse. We need to cleanse our hearts. We need to cleanse our minds. We need to cleanse our souls. We need to turn from our wicked ways. We need to humbly come before God and get right before Him. This is a time that He's allowing us to do that before judgment really falls on this country. We think this, this virus is a bad pandemic. Man, this ain't nothing compared to what God could do. You know, this, this ain't nothing compared to what could really happen. And, and I, I, as I read these verses, you know, I just, you know, we think, oh, you know, we don't have no golden cats up in the building. Oh, but, you know, man, there could be all kinds of idols. Anything can be considered an idol if we are worshiping it or if we're, we're putting too much thought into it or we're putting it above God. Anything that we put above God is an idol. You know, if, if I put my life above God, I've made her an idol. If I put, you know, uh, my truck above God, and believe me, I don't, uh, it's an idol. Uh, you know, if I put my dog above God, it's an idol. If, you know, just hear me out. Anything I put above God, anything I put more time into than God, I've allowed it to become an idol. If I watch TV, if I spend too much time watching TV, I can allow that to become an idol in my life. And, you know, this pandemic is, this virus is bad. But it could be a whole lot worse. You know, is God holding his hand back right now? Before this thing really blows up, you know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I'm not saying this is a judgment from God, but it could be. I'm just saying, people, we need to examine ourselves. Scripture tells us, examine yourself. Man, be praying, be seeking God. Lord, what are we needing? What do I need to do that I might be right with you? What do I need to do so that I can come before you humbly with a clean heart and a clean mind so that I can truly serve you and truly worship you, Father, so that my actions would truly bring glory and honor to you. I, that's all I want to do. I, I, you know, if I don't make anything else in my life, I want to bring more and honor to God. And you know, as, as Ezekiel's pointing out Israel's past to them, they, these guys didn't go through this stuff. As he's showing the elders these things, as he's talking to the elders about these things, as he's presenting these past, you know, that this would be like me standing up and telling all of you about, you know, people coming over on the Mayflower and, and what they went through through the American Revolution and the Civil War and World War One and World War Two, those kind of things. Hey, none of us lived through that. I mean, Mr. Nolan went through World War Two, but ain't nobody else went through World War One and the Civil War and the American Revolution and those type of things that came over on the Amer you know, the the Mayflower. I mean. I got relatives that went through all that stuff. But these Israelites, they didn't actually live through the wilderness wanderings and the entry into the promised land. Well, we got to get right with God now. We got to get right with God now so that our influence, our influence to, to grow the kingdom of God to make a difference in the lives of the lost people around us will make an effect now before it's eternally too late for their lives. You know, yesterday just goes to show me we never know 
We never know when death is going to knock on your door. When Jesus is going to call you home. That was the last call I ever expected to get on a Tuesday afternoon. And, and if you're listening to this today, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, a month from now, and you don't know Jesus is your Lord and Savior, just call me. Just let me talk to you. And the last call I want to get is that somebody that doesn't know Jesus has left this earth and died a lost person. I close this in a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for this time. And Lord, I don't know everything there is to know about what's going on in our world today. Lord, I don't know if it's judgment from you. And Lord, I don't know if it's something you're trying to show me or more judgment against the church or the Christians. Lord, I can stand here all night long and speculate. I can look you skip scripture and look at where you brought judgment against the Israelites and you know speculate that that could be what's going on with our world today and compare it to things that are happening around the world. And Father, we're all different. Father, we're all going through different things. We've all been through different things in the past. Father, we're all facing different things. Father, we're all in this pandemic right now. We've all been told to stay home. Some of us have to leave during the day to go to work. But Lord, as we come home and stay at home, Lord, I pray that we may truly take your word out and reflect on our lives, Lord, to see where we meet up. Lord, help us to look in the mirror. Lord, I could stand here and blame different churches and different pastors and different people all night long saying that, you know, if they did this differently and if they did that differently and, you know, if this one preached differently and if that one preached differently and, you know, if this one didn't worship like that, you know, things would be different in our world. But, Lord, that ain't what you called me to do. You called me to preach your word. Father, I'm not responsible for them. I'm responsible for me. Father, the ones that are listening are responsible for me. They're responsible for them. So Father, I pray and ask that you'd help us to look in the mirror and examine ourselves. Father, help us to humbly come before you and turn from our wicked ways. That we may repent of our sins and that you may hear from us, Lord. Lord, I pray and ask that you just help us, Lord, to see what it is you'd have us to learn from this time that we're going through. Lord, I don't know if there is something that we are doing wrong at Red Level that we need to change. Lord, something in our service, something in our program, something in our activities. But Father, if there is, Lord, I pray that you would reveal that to me. Lord, I pray that you would guide me and direct me, that I may be the, the, the co-shepherd, the under-shepherd, Lord, that you've called me to be. Lord, be with each and every person that is listening now, Father, that you may work in their lives and in their hearts. Be guide and direct them in the ways you'd have them to go, Father. Be with them in all you'd have them to do, and keep them safe, Father, and protect them from this virus. Lord, help them to be a light in their community. Use them in the ways that you'd see fit. We ask all these things in Jesus' wonderful, precious name. Amen. God bless, and don't forget we'll be doing 
tomorrow, probably afternoon time, we'll be doing uh, Thursday's uh, Holy Week devotional, uh, probably uh, tomorrow afternoon. So we'll see you then. God bless.